Uh, naturally, we asked to speak to a Conservative Minister this morning. Uh, none was available, certainly not made available to us. We then said, could we speak to some, any Conservative backbencher on this issue? No Conservative backbencher was available either. If we had a Conservative uh, representative on, I would have asked the Conservative uh, why not only had the target been missed, but why it had been missed by so much. It should have been under 100,000, according to the pledge. It's now close to 300,000, missed by three times. I would have asked uh, why was it that uh, the pledge had been made in, in the first place because the government doesn't control the numbers coming in from the EU. And if the excuse was that they couldn't do that but they controlled anybody coming in from outside of the EU, I would have asked why was it that even non-EU uh, net migra migration was up by 49,000 to 292,000. Indeed, migration from outside the EU, I would have asked, uh, is higher now than migration from those coming from inside the EU. Well, maybe at some stage in the weeks ahead, as the election campaign hots up, we'll get the chance to ask these questions, but we don't have the chance to do it this morning. However, we are joined by the UKIP migration spokesman, Stephen Wolfe, and by Labour's shadow immigration minister, David Hansen. David Hansen, in the year to September, 624,000 long-term migrants came to this country. Is that too much? I think we do need to get it lower, Andrew. Uh, but the, the story today is really the government's failed target. They promised to get net migration. No, 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 down. I know all that. I don't, look, I've done that, and I've done some pretty tough questions, which isn't usually done, and we've empty seated the Conservative. They're not here to defend themselves. That's their fault. What I want to know from you is 624,000, about the size of the population of Manchester in one year. Is that too much? We've got to get migration down, but we have to look at the needs of the British economy. Uh, Nobody I speak to, uh, and anywhere across the country, wants to talk about lack of students, for example, coming to universities, or, for example, doctors going to hospitals, or, for example, skill shortages in some of our key areas like uh, engineering so, and science. So how much would you like to get it down by? Well, we've got to just have a, a, a managed migration policy, and for me... Okay, that so means, how much? Well, uh, there's no figure for that, Andrew. I, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the interests of the UK economy. So there's no way we can judge you, then? I mean, you say you want to get it down, but you won't even give us a ballpark figure, perhaps learning from the Prime Minister's experience uh, on that, because it's not exactly it's salutary in a way. Uh, but there's no way we can judge you if you no. don't give us some kind of ballpark by which to measure you against? Well, I'm interested in the needs of the British economy, Andrew. That means students, that means doctors, that means engineers. Right. I understand that. And it means that. individuals so generally. Is there anything wrong with 624,000 people coming to this country as long-term migrants? No, but some of the people coming to this country, Andrew, and there's 38,000 in this latest figure, are coming without a job from Europe. Now, I think that's wrong. We but you can't stop that. Well, we, we can, because we can put in place, for example, issues to do with some of the poll drivers, such as employment, unemployment benefit, right. such so, as child let, benefit. Let me get those, this those right. Those are key issues. You're talking about 38,000 out of 624,000. Is that I, it? Is no, that it? No, I think there are issues where we need to look at controlling migration, and we need to do that in an effective way. It was Labour that put the point system in place that is managing external to EU migration. After having opposed the point system when the Conservatives proposed it in 2005. Well, I think it's important. We've done... Why did you propose it, then change your mind? We have put so in why place... why did you oppose well, it, then change your mind? We've put in place a point system which is fair and proper, which manages... But why did you oppose it when it was proposed? And I'm talking about what we're going to do. What we're going to do is make fair migration. We need to look at... So were you wrong to oppose the point system when Michael Howard suggested it and campaigned on it in 2005? Well, we put the point system in place, So Andrew. were you wrong to oppose it? Andrew, we put the point system in place. I was in the Home Office at the time. Right. We put the point system in place. Judges on what we've done. Judges on what we've done. Well, what the you did was net migration was even higher under you. It was 320,000 no, no, in 2005. Andrew, net migration in May 2010 was 252,000. But it it's reached 320,000 in 2005. It was even higher than the 300,000 under this government. When we left office, Andrew, net migration was 252,000. It is now 298,000. And the government's target is missing students, it's missing the needs of our economy, it's missing employment, it's missing entrepreneurs... 
and it's damaging our economy. So you want more? No, it's a meaningless target, Andrew, because if you and I left today, we'd be contributing to the success yeah. of the government. I understand target. that, but it was the target your government had as well. <clears throat> your government mentioned... I understand there's a strong case for saying it's meaningless in two areas. Uh, one, it's a net figure, so it's a difference between two very large figures. That's never a useful statistic. No. Uh, secondly, it, can, it includes things you can't control, by and large, EU uh, migration. And thirdly, it includes students, Indeed. Uh, which may not be the same sensible thing to do. Oh. But throughout 13 years of Labour government, you had all of these three things as part of your yeah. statistics. But I am now as the immigration shadow for our mm. party saying we will we remove students from the you immigration would. target. We would mm. do that. That's a sensible measure. Mm. I've met with university vice chancellors this week mm. who are saying we're losing fees, losing world influence and losing spending. Well, that, uh, that's an interesting cities. proposition. How many would that take out of the 624,000? That would take out around about uh, 80,000 people as far as I'm aware. Okay, so there would still be about 550,000 but, coming but, in. But the key question is, Andrew, what is are the needs? Is that good or bad? Well, what are the needs of the UK economy and how do we manage that? That's, that's the key issue we need to look at. We need a much more targeted approach to look at the needs of the UK oh. economy. Does UKIP have a target? Yes, we do. What is you're, you're quite right. Let's deal with the first point. Is this too many people coming into the country? The answer is yes. Are they not controlled or managed by either the Labour Party or the Conservative Party? The answer is yes. Does there need to be a radical review of how we deal with the net migrations? The answer is yes. And what we have suggested, and I put, a, put proposals before, is that for a five-year period, we would look at a gross figure for employment of those who have the right for permanent residence in this country of 50,000. So you would only allow 50,000 people into the country? Now let's analyse the numbers, because you could be absolutely clear, David. No, I'm it's interested, very, very tell clear. me. So you're talking roughly over 200,000 at the moment who, who are coming here for employment purposes. They're, they're a mix. Net? They're, no, that, that's the gross numbers out of the 600,000 uh, 600, that are coming, here, coming each, each, each period that we're looking at. So you've got to analyse that. To, and then from that, you've got about 100, and it's about 190,000 who are now in the year of the students. And so I'm with David, I've proposed... You would take students out? Absolutely. I think that's got to be a clear proposal so that we can focus more directly on other areas. We would keep asylum as it is because we've got responsibilities. You but have to analyse the family numbers that are in there as well. Right. But I'm still, not, I'm, still, I'm still not clear. What would you regard... For, well, let me be more basic than this. Yes. Would you have net migration as a target? No, we'd have gross numbers. You would go gross, gross numbers right. As a target. So and what would a, your a, a, gross target B. As I say, in terms of employment, 50,000 for those who have the right to work with the option for permanent residence here. That's a very significant part because we would still have flexibility to work with businesses and universities for the part-time and short-term contracts. You have to take that out. That would take out over 167,000 from these numbers each year. What I'm also very important uh, to consider, as I say, when we're dealing with the university students. Take them out because that's quite a significant number and we can balance that in a different way. But if only 50,000 are coming in, would you make a distinction between those coming in from the EU and from the non-EU? No. no, not at all. I mean, so that, you would together. So that, that's together? That's absolutely together. And that's why when I say that we have a UK points-based system, that everybody who wants to apply to the United Kingdom would come in on the same system. So but of course, you say to what do you say? To, what that, you say to but, but, uh, it's a it, it no, no, let's get a reaction. But, 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 no, it's a but, significant but, drop. No, no, you've picked the case. I want to get the Labour's reaction. In, in how that will impact upon the four and a half million British citizens who live abroad, including the nearly two million citizens who live in the EU. If we get into tit for tat, no, we gonna, uh, well, uh, you say it won't happen. We're, we're, if we're putting in place that sort of control in a wider Europe, what happens to the one and a half to two million Brits who live in France, Spain, Italy and the rest of Europe at the moment? Well, let's put it in the case that I've suggested before, is that those uh, uh, EU citizens that are already here, we would uh, say to them that you have come here, you were invited here, you had the right to work here, you have the right to stay. Now, it's up to the other European unions to actually, in my belief, follow the ethical principle of saying you were invited to live there and work there for those two and are a half you, million, that they should stay as Are well. you and sure the British economy could survive if only 50,000 mm, people are allowed to come in? No, I'm talking in terms of those with the permanent rights of residence. That's got to be a very clear, important part of work. And yes, I've been recently uh, communicating UKIP's policy and discussing it with senior business people. Uh, across the country, there are concerns. They say, well, what about the low-skilled workers that come in to fill my distribution centres? I can't get them from Britain. I'm saying, sorry, there are. You have to look at the apprenticeship schemes. You're not sorry. working hard enough in terms of that. You have to look at the fact that only... You're kind of pretty much closing our borders, aren't you? No, absolutely not. You're letting David. a small trickle of people in, of which you approve, but and we all end of it. But, but, Andrew, what you've got to look at the fact that even David will agree, you're seeing significant numbers of EU migrants now 
becoming unemployed having come here. You talked about 38,000. That's in the latest figures. Yes, and in terms of those figures. But so we do have people that have come from other countries that are beginning to swell the unemployment figures. And it, isn't it responsible, isn't it ethically responsible for governments to look at our unemployed and say, we need to work and match you to the jobs that are out there? But it's, it's and a lot of the jobs, David, a lot of the jobs we're talking about are low-skilled, low wage and we've got a huge number of zero hour contracts that's what of course if being we made. since you're going to have very tough restrictions on Spaniards French Italians Germans coming to this country it stands to reason they are going to put very tough restrictions on British people going there aren't they why would they not and Andrew if I may say well, so well, well let me get an answer now comes about why would they not well you know they have to consider their own economy so they let, could be no, so they we look, could be restricted we can use, in our ability to go to France or Spain or Italy correct let's put it they could use the modal verb could I don't think they would to use another well, why, why don't, don't you, you no, don't no absolutely we don't know and I think that's the speculation that people make I All think right. that when there's 400,000 Brits live in Spain at the moment there's yes. 173,000 uh, Brits live and work in France at the moment as well so People who wanted to follow them in future would be at grave risk under your plan. Well, I would say to them, obviously, we've already got most of the majority of those people have settled and retired. There's actually a smaller percentage of those who work. And actually, lots more people go to America, Canada, than actually do settle right. in the European Union. I want to bring Ivan Massa in, but I must put this, I must put this point to, to um, David Hansen. If 624,000 people have come to this country, in the past uh, 12 months, the 12 months of September, they say, about the population of uh, the Manchester area, this economy must be doing really well. The economy is doing well in certain areas, yes. And, and it's doing well in a lot of areas. But, uh, if 624,000 people are coming. But, I mean, but let's, let, let, let me just challenge that as well. I mean, for example, in my area, in my constituency, the economy is doing quite well. We have the biggest uh, aircraft factory in Europe, mm. Airbus. Mm -hmm. We make plane wings the best in the world. We employ people, Brits yeah. in France, Brits in Spain, right. Brits in Germany, and French and Brits here. Now, the proposals that Stephen's bringing forward put threats to that. Type no, that of I, I understand that point, and I've questioned him that. It wasn't yeah. the point I put to you, but anyway, but having my side, very patient. Uh, uh, you're a conservative, <laughs> but you don't represent the conservatives on immigration oh, no. uh, matters. Um, it, are you embarrassed by the failure of your party to meet such a simple pledge? Uh, and would it not be a more credible line to take to say, actually, so many people are coming to this country because we're doing such a good job of running the economy? Well, uh, luckily, I can speak from a London perspective, and, um, and from an immigration in London is a success story. People want to come here. If it was a business, you wouldn't kind of practice this stop the world, I want to get off politics. No, we're not trying to do the that. Uh, immigration provides us with a massive, massive form of revenue. They, so why did uh, your party want to uh, slash it to under 100,000? I need to keep to my bit, which is London, because, because one of the things I think is wrong here is there's a potential that the one-size-fits-all rule of immigration in the United Kingdom isn't really working. And I can understand why in Skegness people feel that their culture and their local environment is being changed by immigration and the... This, their local primary school, but in London it's not the same. Oh, but you can't have one rule for London well, and one rule for the road. Maybe you could. There's could a possibility you? that you could run an NI system that was location-based and that within the M25, London, we could we could encourage immigration so, and so you, you, could, you could get jobs in London. So, so immigrants would have a form of internal exile. <laughs> they would well, come to London, they they would come to the London but they couldn't move they, outside London. They could work in London, so I'd be very happy as Mayor of London to, to provide people with jobs in London because we we kind of we need a them. city of diversity and we Do you need think them. this pledge to cut un to under 100,000 should ever have been made? I don't want to go against my party, but I, Can I, I take that as a really no? I really know where this That's comes no. from. But I, That's a no, isn't it? I can see a lot of benefits in immigrants. But Ivan, you do, rec you do accept that there is a big distinction between highly skilled workers, that we get a lot of those in, in London and the city and in service sectors, and also the impact of low wages by large-scale migration. Every report has done so. Only two days ago, the UCL report stated exactly but that But the vast majority more. of people coming into this country have got degrees, for instance, 62% of them, rather than 24% of them in the UK, uh, UK. And the value of right. those, at that, the education they bring in, is something like 49 billion what pounds. Okay. Value of people uh, David Hans, I'll give you the final word.
Well, I think we need to look at some of the other issues. For example, uh, we're talking about low wages, enforcement of the minimum wage, extending gangmaster legislation, supported actually by the, the deputy mayor of Why London. didn't you think of all that oh. when you were in power and letting 320,000 uh, well, net in? I, I think you'll find, Andrew, that we took through the minimum wage in office, opposed so by no, the but, 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 but how many how many people did you prosecute? For, uh, a lot people. more than the Conservatives. Three, How many? There, there were, How many? There were three last year for the Conservatives. There were seven times that more under, under Labour. And we 20? Want, we, in well, 30 we, years? We want, we want, but the minimum wage came in in 1998, opposed by the Conservative Party. That's not the issue. And, and we, well, the, the key issue for us, Andrew, is giving local councils the power to enforce the minimum wage All right. and to extend gangmaster legislation. OK, we'll leave it there. Thanks to the both of you. Thank you.